bonus doesn't error. It's best to have the athlete have begin to have their hands on their hips. That's actually better. Exactly, it's a little more challenging. Oh, that's an error. Put his foot down. All right, so that's twenty sets. Two errors for that. Um, you'd record that on the on the sketch too. And then the third test, you're gonna have a patient. Um, you're gonna put their non-dominant foot. Actually, you put their dominant foot in front of their non-dominant foot. Like like this exactly. And they're gonna keep their hands on their hips. All right, for twenty seconds. Close your eyes. Any deviation from this position to consider an error. So if his hand came off his hip, or if he opens his eyes, so it's pretty good. Uh, uh, so, all right, it's been 20 seconds. No, no errors for that test, and you make that you record that on your on your sheet. Now, if you're using the impact um, sideline tool, you use a similar test for the postural stability testing. Um, you use the uh, there's a couple different tests. The one we like is basically you'd use the same test um, that you would use on the SCAT 2 for the postural stability testing for the impact. Um, it's called the balance error scoring system, except instead of doing it just three times, you would do, um, you'd actually do that. And you'd also have foam. Uh, you would do the same testing on a, on a foam platform. I don't like doing that just because it's more equipment. But if you decide to go with the impact, um, postural stability testing, um, you're going to be utilizing the, the BESS, the Balanced Error Scoring System, for that portion of the testing. But I really like using the SCAT too, just because it's simpler. Now, all right, so basically that's, that's a coordination um, examination. Now, the other exam you can use for this as well, and the SCAT 2 uses this as well, I take a seat for me, athlete. Thanks. Um, basically, the patient, it, it kind of describes on the SCAT 2. This is, again, for, the first one is for postural stability, and this one's more for coordination. So to the athlete, you would say, I'm going to test your coordination now. Please sit comfortably in a chair with your eyes open and your arm right or left outstretched. Shoulder flexed to 90 degrees and elbow and fingers extended. When I give a start signal, I would like you to perform five successive finger-to-nose repetitions using your index finger to touch the tip of your nose as quickly and as accurately as possible. So... <clears throat> You're gonna time how long it takes them to do five repetitions. <coughs> so you can you can begin when you're comfortable. Alright, excellent. So he did it under four seconds, he'd get he get um, a one for that since he completed it in four seconds. And again, it describes this on the form. Um, Alright, so for the last one, the, the neuropsychological test. Now the, the best, um, basically, this is the cornerstone of concussion evaluation. You're going to use a neuropsychological test. You know, this is less of a sideline protocol. It's more of when you're back in the in the trainer's room. Um, you're going to be using this test. Um, the one we like using the best is the impact test, which is essentially going to test um, your memory. Uh, it has a there's a whole algorithm of of different um, concentration exams and the best way to use this is um, you need a baseline so if you're able to get your athletes um, to take this test when obviously they're not concussed and then you can compare those results to after they've possibly suffered a concussion you're gonna be able to track you know the impact the concussions had on their concentration and you're also gonna be able to track the recovery route <clears throat> and how well that they're recovering um, and impact is my favorite. It's uh, it's rapid administrative. You know, you, you can take it very quickly. Um, you can get fast results, and uh, it's by far the the best uh, neuropsychological testing that that one can do. So, kind of in review, we, you're going to rule out severe neuro injury, doing what we did before, um, and then if if the athlete has a cognitive change or postural instability, bam, you're going to diagnose that concussion right there remove the athlete from play. Um, again, if, if they don't have any cognitive change or postural instability, um, you're going to see if, if they have positive responses to the, to the symptoms checklist. So if they're having abnormal responses, bam, diagnose concussion right there. You're going to remove that athlete from play. If, if they don't have any cognitive change or postural instability, normal responses from the checklist, you're going to consider other diagnosis. Um, 
they possibly return to play. Um, but if they have, you know, anything positive, you're definitely going to remove that athlete from play. And then you're going <clears> to <throat> follow up with um, finished assessment and observe with a neuropsychological test. Um, and the one we use is impact, and that's, uh, that's our favorite. Um, and then you're going to, you know, this is kind of out of the scope of, of what we're doing, the demonstration today, but you're going to rest the athlete, and then you're going to do a return to play protocol, which you're going to, you know, you're going to work with your, your, th your uh, athletic trainers and physician, medical physicians um, to kind of come up with a protocol. Um, definitely want rest, uh, cognitive rest, physical rest, um, you know, before you can return that athlete to athletic uh, competition. Um, just doing on the references here, if you guys have any questions, uh, thanks for the references, uh, and thanks a lot to uh, Eastern Maine Medical Center and the Center for Family Care here in Bangor, Maine, and the University of Vermont. Thanks a lot to uh, family nurse practitioner Mike Rizzo, uh, he's been a good mentor of mine, uh, great inspiration, and uh, for our athlete, thanks a lot. And uh, if you have any questions or have any comments you want to post, um, you can just, you know, for improving the, uh, the five-step on-the-field initial concussion assessment, just post them underneath the YouTube clip. And, uh, you know, we really appreciate you, you know, helping us make this a, a more easier, easier to use five-step on-the-field initial concussion assessment. Again, I'm Griffin Biedren, third-year medical student at University of Vermont, and uh, I hope that this helps you um, take care of athletes. All right, take care.